What's going on lads? It's Thursday with some more Player of the Weeks. We're back and we are going to be taking a look at these cards here. So I'm going to keep this short and sweet. I'm not going to fluff it up. I think that apart from one or two cards, if you're if you're spinning for this and you get like Player of the Weeks are the same every week. The players change, the boosters change, all of that stuff. But the reason for spinning for them should be the same. Either you're looking to get a unique player that hasn't been released or a combination of his stats, skills and booster hasn't been released or else you're just spinning because you want a quick boost to your team if you're a newcomer. Now I know somebody had a contact me last, contacted me last week and was like, oh, you know, I've only been playing the game for three or four days and I spun and I got the two best boosters in the player of the week. You know, you're saying they're not great. Of course they're going to be good for you. Of course they're going to be good for you. But what I'm saying is that like if you've been playing the game for a while, you're not obviously going to need these players. Like Rodrigo at a 95 overall is going to be a beastly player, but he's not going to be able to compare it with, you know, Rummy or Romario. So it's all about it's all about perspective of where you're at with the game. I always say that. These cards can be very, very good. You're seeing the cards here on this screen with the booster, but without the manager booster. And their base core stats are very, very strong. You've got 88 dribbling, 85 ball control, anti possession with 84 balance, and 88 acceleration. His boost is to speed, balance, dribbling, anti possession, which is very, very solid with 92 finishing as a deep line forward. I like Rodrigo. He's definitely a player that I haven't played enough with. His player of the week card is fantastic. He also has super sub, flip flap, double touch, and soul control. So he's got ball roll off the rip. If you have missed out on Rodrigo and you have a couple of coins to spend, I would definitely try and get Rodrigo. Of course, it's all luck. You know, you're not, you have a 1 in 11 chance of getting him. The rest of the pack here, depending on who you want to have in this pack, you've got a box to box Sierra. This guy is down with no booster. He's got fairly okay player skills, but at this stage in the game, if you've been playing for a while, if you're pushing division, if you're pushing division 3 upwards, as in you want more wins from division 3, 2, and 1. I feel like that these cards, there's no point in really spinning for them because they've too many weaknesses that you can't train up and you can't really invest any time or, uh, you know, additional skills in them to kind of like um, overcompensate for their lack of stats, like their raw stats. The player form only lasts a week usually. Um, so yeah, it is definitely something that I feel like that if you are willing to take the, the bet on it or the, the gamble on it, then yeah, definitely you can try, but you do only have a 1 in 11 chance. You know, for every Rodrigo and Rafael Leao, you're going to have a goalkeeper like this, uh, Karnaseshi. Is that his name? Karnaseshi. 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 So this guy is just a standard goalkeeper. He only has high punt. He doesn't have low punt and he doesn't have any other player skills. Uh, long throw, he doesn't even have that. He's, he's okay. He's okay. I still feel like that Oblak is a really good option as well if you haven't got him. You've got Pacheco there here. Pacheco. Les, my pronunciations have gone absolutely horrible. Absolutely horrible. Blocker, interception, aerial superiority and acrobatic clearance. Again, he's got a standard generic face in the game. Aggression is very low for a build-up CB, but that's standard... Speed and acceleration, not too bad. Jump and physical contact, not too bad. Heading, not too bad. But the rest of the cards and the rest of the cards in this pack, I mean, Sergio Ramos as a booster as well. Very nice defensive stats. Not bad speed, heading, jump and physical contact. This isn't a bad card. I mean, if you're looking to get a really nice Sergio Ramos card, this might be one of your last chances of getting him. It's a pretty decent pack uh, or a decent card, to be fair. Um, so I wouldn't, you know, be against anyone trying to, to go for him. We also have Marasuch. This guy is a right back, attack and full back. And as you see here, blocker, interception, area superiority, fighting spirit. What they're doing on a lot of these cards now, especially if you've only started playing, what they've done on a lot of these cards is they've actually kind of limited their... They've limited either their stats or their skills so that they're not the finished article. So that if they do release another better version of the card, then you'd be kind of saying like, oh, you know, well, this guy's really good, but he, he's even better, you know? So it's all kind of a, you're chasing that better player all the time, and especially that you can't train these up because this guy's just a standard right back, you know, no real blister and pace, no excellent stats about him, can't really pass that well, his defense is, is lacking. And his speed and dribbling is quite poor for an attacking fullback. So that's kind of where they're going with it. Hanko then as well as a defensive fullback. So his defense is going to be better. Obviously, speed is a bit better. Not bad. Not a bad card. He doesn't have blocker, which I do like on my defensive fullbacks like wan -Bissaka. Although this guy can play CB as well. It's not a bad option at all. But yeah, I mean, he's not going to change the dial for you too much. You have João Neves. So this guy is a very interesting and exciting prospect in world football playing for Benfica. I've actually watched a bit of him this year just to kind of see what he's like, see if the hype is about. Rumored to be worth about 100 mil. 
Double touch, one touch pass, true pass and weighted pass, track back and interception and fighting spirit. I know he's rumored with United, so that's kind of why I checked him out. I think Bayern are looking at him as well, but very, very solid player. He has a standard uh, face in the game. I don't feel like that these cards at the moment, there's so many of them, like Pedri, Rodri, or Pedri and Gavi are so similar to this card and you can get them for GP. Pedri at the moment, if you're struggling with an AMF is, or a CMF, is one of the best in the business. As he's unbelievable um, in the game. Um, we played it with his player of the week last week in stream. We'll probably play a little bit more with him today. But it's just a standard kind of orchestrator CMF. You know, you've got good dribbling, high ball control, really good passing. And defensive engagement and aggression is not too bad for CMF. But his speed and acceleration and balance is a little bit lacking compared to the upper, upper tier of orchestrators. Then we also have Rafael Leao and Harvey Barnes, who we see here. Harvey Barnes, again, good speed. He's got a facing game, of course. Super sub, gamesmanship, pinpoint crossing. You kind of know what you're going to be getting into with this guy is to just get the ball out wide and swing it in. And then you also have Diaz and Leao. So these are probably the picks along with Rodrigo. This is the booster, Rafael Leao. He can play CF, left mid, or left wing. Listen, Rafael Leao is a, is a card that I find it very hard because he's a whole player in this one. I find it very hard to recommend any version of Rafael Leao. Now, he does have double touch, flip flap, and soul control from the rip, which is ball roll. I have a tutorial on that if you guys want to check it out. It's a super overpowered uh, trick move if you want to beat defenders one-on-one. -on -one. one of the easiest ways of beating defenders. I feel like that this card, with the balance, with the speed, with the dribbling, everything is perfect on it, apart from the tight possession. I definitely feel you have to play him as a CF. I don't really feel... Or, sorry, as a left winger. I don't really feel as a CF. His movement is kind of weird. I don't know what it is about him, but his movement is a little bit weird for me compared to a goal poacher um, or a fox in the box. His form is also inconsistent. That's, that's really not a non-issue. And then last but not least, we have Diaz from Liverpool. Now, I said it in the last video that I did. I was really looking forward to this Diaz card, and I'm not really that disappointed. Tight possession and balance are not where, they want, where I'd want them to be. His finishing is not great. Um, but his speed and acceleration is what you want from him here, and double touch and soul control, uh, pinpoint crossing, outside curler, chop turn, yeah, I mean, on, in hindsight, I think actually looking at him here now, it is a bit of a disappointing car with that balance at 74, because there's so many wingers that you can get into this role now, that I definitely feel he could be, he could have been a better card, I mean, why not give his balance even at like 84, uh, or his tight possession at 93 and just kind of switch it up a bit, because I feel unless you're a Liverpool fan or a Diaz fan, you're not going to use this card especially over if you already have an established left winger in your squad or right winger in your squad. So that is it for the player of the week, lads. We'll keep it short and sweet. I would say at this stage, it's kind of more hit than miss and I would probably more skip than spin. But I already have Rodrigo and Rafael Leao. I already not really that interested in Sergio Ramos. If I got him, I got him. But yeah, I don't know where we spin. We'll see later on in the stream what you guys think. But it's, it's a weak enough player of the week. Let me know what you guys think. I'll be back live streaming in a little bit. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you then.